This is the circuit for our multiplexer. This is choosing one of a set of possible inputs to route to an output. Now we want the opposite. We want a demultiplexer. We want to be able to take that one data line and divert it to one of a set of possible outputs based on the selection lines. Now, the way we do this is, again, we're going to activate those uh, min terms just like we did before, but we're going to take that data line, we're going to route it to all four of them, and then just have them go separately. So in fact, this is a really simple circuit. We're going to have our four min terms just like we had before. We're going to have, uh, it's going to look like this. Uh, this one is going to be S1, S0. And it's going to be 1, 1 for D3. And it's going to be S1 is 1, S0 is 0 for D2. It's going to be S1 is 0 and S0 is 1 for D1. And it's going to be both 0 for, whoops, for D0. I think that's right. I may have messed those up. I think that's right. But now what we have to do is route our data line, whatever it is, I guess we should call these Q outputs, right? Q3, Q2, Q1, and Q0. Because what we're doing is we're taking an input line and we're routing it to one of these based on the selector com combination. So we'll call this D, this is our data line, and we're gonna run that data line to all four of those AND gates. And then depending on which min term is active, only one of these outputs will contain the data on that data line. Now this should already look a little similar because when we built out the decoder, that is precisely what we built, except we called this an enable instead of calling it a data line. The functional requirements of these two devices are identical. A demultiplexer and a decoder are the same device. As long as we have an enable on the decoder, uh, they're the same device because we have a single line that is being shunted out to one of a set of possible outputs. In the case of the decoder, the single line is the enable. If the enable is zero, all the outputs are zero. If the enable is one, the output is whichever min term is selected by the address. In the case of the demultiplexer, the min term is selected by the, out, by the uh, address, or in this case, the select lines, and the output is equal to the input. <laughs> which is exactly the same thing. If D is 0, the output is 0. If D is 1, the output is 1. So it's just a different way of thinking about the requirements. This routes the number or routes the input D to one of the possible outputs, Q. This one activates one of the possible min terms D if enable is on. But it's the same device. So now we have these four devices. We have multiplexers. Whoops. We have multiplexers, demultiplexers. I'm going to write these out. We have multiplexer, which we abbreviate as MUX. And a multiplexer is from N to 1. Right? We have a number of inputs, and we have one possible output. Okay? A demultiplexer is from 1 to N. Okay? So this is if you have one, to, one input, then you're going to route it to one of the N possible outputs. Then you have a decoder and a decoder again is just like a demultiplexer. So this is, now we call, when we talk about decoders and encoders, the number of inputs is the number of uh, select lines, the number of address lines. So this is going to actually be log base 2 of n to n. And the, the encoder is going to be n to log base 2 of n. Because if n is a power of 2, this is going to be 4 to 2. And so we need to be n is a power of 2. Because each of these corresponds to a set of min terms. And so if you have uh, two inputs, for example, two select lines, then you're going to have four um, for min term lines for the encoder. If you have two lines coming in, you're going to have four lines going out for the decoder. The multiplexer and de demultiplexer only have one line each, 
because you're routing information from a set of possible inputs down to one for the multiplexer or from one to a set of possible inputs for a demultiplexer. These four devices are going to be very useful uh, when it comes to building out our, uh, our computer systems. It's worth knowing that uh, multiplexer and demultiplexer are used in other contexts as well. In fact, this is what we use uh, when we're making telephone calls. Um, multiplexing says we're going to have a whole bunch of different possible people who are wanting to make a telephone call, but we only have so much bandwidth on our cellular tower, or we only have so many wires going through <laughs> from you know, North America to Europe or whatever. We can't have one wire for every possible pair of people who want to talk to each other. So on one side, when somebody makes a phone call and they press all the buttons, what's happening is a series of multiplexers are being used to select one line to get you out of the region and into some region for the person you want to talk to. And then on the other end of the line, the same code is used to demultiplex from that single line that crosses the Atlantic Ocean out to the individual phone that is going to ring and allow you to talk to each other. So these kind of technologies have been in use for a lot of situations, uh, but we are going to use those in the context of creating a computer system, uh, building a data path that's going to select information, route it from one place to another.